It's Friday, everybody. The 22nd day of March, 2024. This is Wake Up on Anchee Valley. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. Thanks for starting your day with us and your weekend. A couple of quick notes. If you haven't noticed already, I didn't shave this morning. I just didn't have the time. Long day, long night. So I'm a little on the scruffy side today. I want to apologize for that. But on a more important level, I think today, specifically tonight, I'm going to win the lottery. I just, I just have a feeling. I just, you get one of those, you know, funny feelings. It's, uh, have you checked lately? Like Mega Millions, it's like $80 billion or something like that. Uh, it's worth buying a ticket, even though I give the state enough money involuntarily. I'm gonna go ahead and give them some money today and we shall see if I win the lottery. If I don't win the lottery, I'll be here on Monday. If I do win the lottery, I'll still be here on Monday because I'll have to clean out my desk. 43 degrees, the clouds that have been well advertised are here. Today is the, really the big transition day. That big ridge of high pressure is flattened out, moving on out of here. We're in for a very rainy Saturday. We could get a half an inch of rain on Saturday. That's a lot of rain, so the big weather change is on its way. It'll be here by the end of the day today. Forecast details are coming up. News is coming up, lots of sports. Wow, Gonzaga men win. Wazoo men win. Kraken played hockey. We'll have uh, sports and our good friend Alan Walker from the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council will be dropping by. We visit with Alan every once in a while. Big changes going on, good changes for the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council. They're in the process of moving into their new facility, the old CNO Nursery on North Wenatchee Avenue. Uh, their food pantry is about ready to go. All of the food distribution has pretty much been moved to the new location, although they're still in their offices on Lewis Street. Alan will be joining me in the back half of the program and an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty. Let's do it. Let's start with our tour. We've got some pretty good cameras today because the sun is now up, has been for about five minutes. Sunrise this morning, 658. Sunset tonight, 717. That's 12 hours and 19 minutes of daylight. We like that. And of course, we're still gaining about three minutes of daylight a day, and we have been pretty much all month long. But the mild spring weather is about ready to be gone. You can see the high clouds over the Wenatchee Valley. Badger Mountain camera looking due west. There is the Wenatchee Valley. Zoom that in just a little bit. You can see the mighty Wenatchee River emptying into the even mightier Columbia River. Uh, Sleepy Hollow area, the town Toyota Center just out of view, Wenatchee Valley Super Oval on your lower left-hand corner, and the wave and wheat is about ready to smell sweet. As that gets going, good morning to the Wenatchee side of the valley. You can't see East Wenatchee, the bench blocks you. Sorry about that. This is a pretty cool view. We haven't used this in a while. This is the Appalandes camera. This is high above the Appalandes Antique Mall in Kashmir. We have it flipped around and pointed towards the upper valley, towards Dryden and Peshastin, that's Stein Hill to your left. I, for years and years, I called it Stein's Hill. I don't know why, I just did. I added a plural, it isn't plural, it's just Stein Hill. My bad, and you can see the orchards, they're getting ready to get busy, I'm sure. And we all love the Billy Goat camera because it gives you views like that, high above the Alta Lake Golf Course and State Park, which by the way is open. All the golf courses I think are open with the exception of Kaler Glen. They still have snow on the ground up there. Good morning to our friends up in the Okanagan, Omak area. Right now, by the way, in Omak, you are at 45 degrees. Uh, weekend snow, well, upper elevations. Uh, anyway, if you're traveling to the mountain passes, either heading off to the west towards Seattle or heading off to the east to the Idaho Panhandle, we have a slide to show for you from the National Weather Service to let you know you'll be dealing with some winter driving conditions. Uh, late tonight through Sunday, most of the snow will be Saturday because we're gonna get a gobs of rain, but take a look at the snowfall. Uh, it is still, of course, early spring, and this is not an unprecedented deal. We're not gonna have any real snow here in the Wenatchee Valley. Uh, the snow level is gonna be right around 3,000 feet. Anything above that will be light snow. Anything 4,000 feet and above, a little bit heavier, but as you can see, Stevens and I-90, they're gonna get enough snow to make the driving a little on the dicey side. Late tonight, all day Saturday, for the most part, tapers off on Sunday. And that is kind of like the forecast is here. The only difference is we're talking rain and not snow. From the National Weather Service, 
Lots of clouds today as the day increases and goes forward. We have an increasing chance of rain. By the time we get to sunset tonight around 7 o'clock, we have a good chance of rain. High of about 58 degrees. Rain and a lot of it overnight tonight and pretty much all day into Saturday. Overnight low tonight of about 44. Overnight rain, about a quarter of an inch. Rain on Saturday up to half an inch. When this whole system is all said and done, we could get a total of three quarters of an inch of rain from tonight into early Sunday morning. The rain will be tapering off Sunday night. Could see some light rain on Sunday, but for the most part, it's not going to be looking too bad at all with a high of 54. These are below normal temperatures, by the way, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, where we still see partly sunny skies. Basically, Sunday and Monday are the same deal. Lots of sunshine Tuesday, slightly warmer, and then another system comes in Tuesday night, which brings us rain and cools us right back down again. All right. At your forecast, it's six minutes after the hour. There is a lot of news to get to on this Friday, and we will do that for you when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley Friday edition on the NCW Life Channel. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota equipment. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience in the U.S., they offer the versatility and reliability to get the job done right all year round. Right now, bring home select VX and L-Series tractors for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 72 months. Contact your Kubota dealer for details. Secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Mobiletel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509 888 8888 today. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect, no matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Forty-three degrees with high clouds. The clouds will be getting lower and thicker and more prevalent as the day progresses. Overnight rain tonight, rain all day, a lot of rain as a matter of fact on Saturday. We'll dry out on Sunday for the weekend. It's nine minutes after the hour. The man accused of employing women to provide sexual services at a Wenatchee massage parlor, in fact, multiple Wenatchee massage parlors, is in jail in lieu of half a million dollars bond. Shawn County Judge Robert Jordan set bail yesterday for Lin Wee Yan. He's the 61-year-old former proprietor of the massage clinics who left the country for China while authorities served search warrants on the businesses. The Columbia River Drug Task Force said Yan and his spouse hired women to work at the businesses who then offered sex to clients. He's charged with organized crime, money laundering, and prostitution. Yan was finally arrested this week after his return to Tacoma from China. Speaking through a Mandarin interpreter in court yesterday, he told the judge he was out of the country when the crimes were allegedly committed and didn't learn he was accused until last fall. <laughs> I don't have any resources to for bail because all my accounts were frozen. Well, 
处理这个事情。I was in the consulate in Guangzhou to renew my son's passport last November. That's when I was told I'm wanted here in this court to come back for some legal um, request. So I came back. Yan's wife, 44-year-old Yan Yang, allegedly partnered with him in the prostitution scheme. She remains at large. Authorities are looking for her. Police believe she has yet to return from China. The Shillong County PUD's acquisition of the Peshastan Water District is a done deal and goes into effect on March 26th. The consolidation between the two parties has been in development since 2016, but now, with the official acquisition date uh, fast approaching, PUD commissioners have instructed staff to establish a rate equalization charge. The new charge would go up would, would the new charge would uh, make up for the differences between the existing PUD rates and the Peshastan water rates. It would go into effect on June 1st and is estimated to generate $33,000 in revenue per year so they can cover the needed improvements to the Peshastan water district. The PUD initially proposed a rate adder for Peshastan customers, but they're now exploring other options to reduce that financial burden. The federal agency is proposing to reintroduce grizzly bears to the North Cascades issued their environmental impact statement on it yesterday. It spells out the expected results of grizzly reintroduction, which could seed a starting population of 25 bears over a five to 10 year period in the North Cascades National Park. The report addresses more than 12,000 public comments on the proposal, most of them not in favor of the Grizzlies' return. It's not the final word on reintroduction. That decision is still to come in the weeks ahead. The Great Bear has not been seen in the North Cascades since 1996. The Dryden Transfer Station, that gets most of the garbage from the Upper Valley, of course, has been closed while they fix this concrete uh, pit. Well, now a fire has closed its metal scrap collection yard as well. Shillon County Public Works says a fire of unknown origin broke out Thursday morning in the transfer station's metal yard. That's where big appliances get dropped off so they can be disposed. Shillon County Fire District 6 responded, got the fire under control. The flames, the flames were confined to that area. There was no damage beyond the scrapyard itself. Public Works says while the cleanup takes place, the scrapyard, in addition to the dump, is now both closed. Public schools in Washington State is going to receive a small boost in funding for paraeducators, the support staff. Senate Bill 5882 was signed into law by Governor Jay Inslee on March 19th. The idea increased public school staffing to better meet the needs of students. The bill states that support staff are vital team members who support students who grapple with mental and behavioral health issues. The increased state funding for paraeducators will support one position per elementary school, 0.776 positions per middle school, 0.728 positions per high school. The state will also fund two office support and instructional aids per elementary school, two and a half positions per middle school, and three and a half positions per high school. The bill is effective 90 days after the session ended. And there's a new initiative to get people and their dogs out and about. It's the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society and they've teamed up with the Chelan Douglas Land Trust to launch Pets and People Outdoors. Uh, it's a partnership that offers events to get people on dog-friendly, protected trails. Each event will showcase a trail with hiking opportunities for people and their dogs of all fitness levels. Attendees will share trail etiquette tips, you know, like picking up the poo-poo. The Land Trust currently oversees 33 miles of dog-friendly trails in the Manchi foothills. That's a lot. The first event is a few months away. It'll be held on Saturday, May 18th at Saddle Rock. And that is the news at 14 minutes after the hour. A busy news week will wrap up with a busy newscast tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock on TV on this very station that you're watching, 5, 6, and 10. If that doesn't fit in your schedule, it's up and running on the World Wide Web. Our newscast will be up and running at 5 o'clock tonight on our homepage, ncwlife.com, on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and on our app. And if you don't have our app, that's how you go about doing it. Pick up your smartphone and do the old QR. And it's down the road you go. We also have a Twitter page, sometimes called X, Instagram, all that good stuff. And get a hold of us at news at ncwlife.com if you have a news tip or if you just want to talk about how good this show is. <laughs> when we come back, highlights of a Gonzaga victory and a Cougar victory.
We like that. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchor Valley on the NCAA Life Channel. Cash back from Chelan County PUD. This is going to look great in the house. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the diagnostic doctor from Dick Seating and Air Conditioning. <laughs> Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. Are you hungry enough to eat the ass end out of a rhinoceros? I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills, you'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make the trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. Seventeen minutes after the hour, Gonzaga built a commanding 23-point lead. They won by 21. They cruised an easy 86-65 win over McNeese State last night in round one of the NCAA men's tournament. The Bulldogs made six of their first seven three-pointers and eight of 11 by halftime. McNeese averaged beating their opponents by almost 19 points a game this year. Number one in the country. Watson missed, but it's tipped in by E.K. Five to shoot. That's not the shot we're looking for. Yeah, a lot, a lot of picks on, and I, on that play, but not a lot of rolling. Shoemaker was setting picks, but he wasn't rolling. Hickman knocks down another one. Eight to shoot. Stromer gets it over in the corner. Gets it right back, and he'll drive three at the buzzer and got it. 14 and two since mid-January. Moving the ball like this. Scoring the three ball. And I had him on February, I think it was February 10th against Kentucky. And it, we're at practice as ourselves. I just feel like we just put it together, play a little bit like we've been playing lately. And then, you know, maybe we get in our conference tournament, we make a little run. We can keep that string of NCAA appearances together. They're 14 and 2. He knew what he was talking about. Big Greg making the difference. Cutting down the lane and one. Right now, this has just been a total mismatch. All Zags. McNeese looks a little overmatched in this game. Another three for Greg. Has to bring it back out. Nice defense by Stromer. That might have been one too many passes. Another layup rims out. How many of those have we seen from McNeese in the first half? Five. He couldn't turn around to go with EK. His legs not working. Nembard, three rims out. EK puts it right back up with the left hand. No wasted motion. This has been an offensive clinic. Watson the extra pass. Nebhart for three. Kept alive by Watson. Down low. Easy lay in for Huff. Watson found a lane. Left hand. On the crossover. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, you, you think the Zags want a little charged up for this game? They've been hearing everybody talking about different 5 12 matchups. You see Watson with the steal. 
And he just looks over at Wells and says, you might as well slow down. I'm, I'm heading in. Yeah. Didn't, didn't look like a serious ankle sprain or high ankle sprain or anything of that nature. He just probably need to retake or just take a little bit of a break. Oh, great pass. June Sukio. And the Cowboys will dribble it out, and their season will come to a close at 30 wins and four losses. The Zags earned their 15th consecutive opening round win. They'll take on fourth seed at Kansas tomorrow for a chance to advance to the Sweet 16. For the Cougars, it wasn't pretty, but it was a win. Uh, their first win in the big dance since 2008, 66 to 61. Over Drake last night in Omaha, Isaac Jones led the way with 20 points and 11 rebounds. Clough inside, working against Brody. Overton, by the way, went to the bench with three fouls. Wells, shot fake, then takes it, rattles it home. Big time shot for Jalen. We've got a lot of ISO ball in the second half as Washington State. Jakubowski yeah. converts the three. Way of striking up outside the three-point line. Yeah, but that was Connor in Wright's fifth assist. Doing a nice job of getting in the paint, finding the open shooter. No answer for Isaac Jones tonight. Under three minutes to play. Rice into the paint. Rice has it blocked away by Brody out of bounds. It'll remain Washington State basketball. He wants it back. Yeah, but the wing players are not looking to make a play. Three is good. Isaiah Watts. Get, get a quick two here. And right to DeBreeze. Back to Enright. There's the quick two. He lays it in. Four seconds left. Washington State for the first time since 2008 has won an NCAA tournament game as they knock off Drake 66 to Way to go, Wazoo. They play tomorrow against second-seeded Iowa. Iowa beats South Dakota State 82-65. to You know the weather tomorrow is going to rain all day. It's going to be a perfect day to kick back, suck down some cold ones, and watch college basketball all day. And you don't have any conflicts, and I have both of these channels. Number five seed of Gonzaga, number four seed of Kansas. This will be a good one. It'll be at 12:15 on CBS, and right after that on TNT, the seven seed of Cougars and number two Iowa State, the Cyclones, 3:10 on TNT. Well, two teams going in the opposite directions continue to go in the opposite directions. Last night in Las Vegas, the Kraken dropped their six in a row, and the Golden Knights won for the fourth time in their last six games. You're part of the scouting plan, so if you're facing the top pair of defense on the other side. Absolutely, that's all part of it. It's a whole new ball game. Vegas right back. Side of it, it is in. Jack Eichel, the touch of the side of the cage. One up in Vegas. Here's the ears, and it poked off his stick. And again, Vegas wants to race. Eichel with Carlson shorthanded. Stop by between themselves and the Blues and tighten the gap with the Kings. A win here tonight at home. Cut their deficit to just two points against Los Angeles for third in the Pacific. The they score! The shot and the point by Riker Evans tipped in front and there it is. It's a 1-1 hockey game. They ended up drawing a penalty to go on the power play. It's going to just be a simple shot from the point that traffic in front of that. Schultz is right there. Looks like he gets a piece of that one. But good job from Schwartz. That Schultz, sorry, Schwartz in front of the net there. You can see Logan trying to look, Logan Thompson trying to look over, over top of him. Good stick on that one. Schwartz bangs it in. Look at Alec Martinez lift his leg like to try to kick it away yeah. too. Anything you can do. Tanavall the poor check. Can't get there. He got it away from him. Now with speed, here's Wah, has a chance now, coming in, that's not a stop in the back, off the line! Red Howden might have been the man for Vegas! 2-1, Golden Knights! Again, five on five, evil the cracking of a man on the box. McCann fits it, side of the net, it is stopped with the crease! Matty Beneers had a golden opportunity to tie this game. What a chance! And now the empty the net from long distance and goes Chandler Stevenson, and that'll seal the deal for the Vegas Golden Knights. 
turnover in the neutral zone. Vegas is going to win. They'll move to within two points of the Kings for third in the Pacific. And they'll give themselves a four-point edge over the Blues for wild card two in the... Kraken will try and stop their losing streak there in Phoenix tonight to take on the Coyotes, 7 o'clock on Root Sports Northwest. Baseball games that didn't count. Mariners put up four runs in the bottom of the eighth. They squeeze out a 7-6 win over the Reds last night in Peoria. Cal Raleigh blasted his fourth homer of the spring with two outs in the second. Swing and a drive deep to right center field. Going back, and this one is gone. Goodbye, baseball. Line shot. Onto the berm in right center. Cal Raleigh with his fourth home run of the spring. And it's now the Mariners three and the Reds two. And it came on an 0-2 pitch from Nick Martinez. And Cal jumped on it and hit a rope to right center. It scores Polanco out in front of him. Three runs are in. With less than a week to go before opening day, they don't normally play split squad games anymore, but they're going to today. They have a couple of games today. Uh, the Mariners, uh, half the M's will be hosting the Brewers. The other portion of the M's will be at the Diamondbacks. Speaking of baseball, your prep baseball scores from yesterday and uh, pretty much blowouts all up and down with the exception of Liberty Bell and Manson Cascade all over Waterville Mansfield. Okanagan defeated Orville by 10. But that's a that's not a typo, folks. Brewster beat Bridgeport in baseball 30 to nothing and Liberty Bell just snuck by Manson. Three zip baseball today. Go out to the ballpark and watch the local kids play. Sunny side is at Moses Lake. All of these are double headers. Uh, that'll get going at four o'clock. Eisenhower at Eastmont and Dan Whitefield. First pitch in game one at four o'clock tonight. East Valley travels to Afraid. A first pitch in their double header at four o'clock. And Quincy at Warden for a single game at 4:30. Then on Saturday, if the rain doesn't come. And it will. Uh, double headers for Lake Roosevelt and Okanagan Bridgeport. At Oroville, a single game between Omak and Manson and Clay on that Tenasca doubleheader, 1 o'clock. Again, rain may play a factor there. Prep soccer scores. They play in the rain. It doesn't matter. Bridgeport beat Brewster 3 to 2. Tenasca over Terrace by a couple. Liberty Bell just got by Okanagan. Manson by 1 over Oroville on the pitch. And Cascade defeated their rivals from Kashmir in boys soccer yesterday. 3 0 boys soccer today. Couple of big ones. Moses Lake will be at Eastmont at 7 o'clock when Angie travels down to Sunnyside at 7 o'clock. And then prep soccer on Saturday. Pretty sizable slate. Most of them are the scholars, smaller schools. Again, these games will be played. They play in the rain. Medical Lake will be at Quincy at 11 a.m., as will Manson hosting Cashmere and Colville host Tenasca at 12 noon. Is afraid to have Prosser and Liberty Bell and Omak will do battle on the pitch Saturday at 1 o'clock. Softball scores and girls fast pitch. East Valley got by Wenatchee 9 to 7 in Wenatchee. Amira Cooley Hartline, Crosby Stills, Nash and Young beat Lake Roosevelt 12 to 2. It was Brewster all over Bridgeport, Okanagan all over Orville. These are the kind of scores you get sometimes in girls fast pitch softball, including Liberty Bell's route over Manson. The games today, if you want to go check it out, Moses Lake will be at Sunnyside, doubleheader at 2.30. You're afraid to add Grandview, a doubleheader at 3, and Eastmont and Eisenhower in girls' fast pitch softball, a doubleheader at 4. And then tomorrow, again, weather permitting. Some of these games may be rained out, so keep an eye on things. At 11 a.m., you got River, Riverside at Omac, you got Manson at Chelan, doubleheader between Cascade and Kittitas and Bridgeport at Oroville. At 1 o'clock is Deer Park at Omac and Okanagan at Lake Roosevelt. Again, Mother Nature may play a role in that. In a game we showed you last night on our Facebook page, when Angie beat Chiawana in boys lacrosse, and they beat them good, 16-6. to If you missed the game, by the way, it will be on TV tonight. So check it out, it's pretty entertaining. And finally, can't forget about our Wenatchee Wild, still in fourth place, still have a two-point lead, but they really need a victory over Victoria tonight. And then Saturday, they wrap up the regular season at Everett to take on the Silver Tips. Austin Friday will be my guest next week as we talk about the playoffs. And those are just some of the games that people are playing at the bottom of the hour for the obscure holiday. I do research. I find all the obscure holidays. I find the one that I like. I do little tidbits about it. If I find it entertaining or interesting, here is my notes for the obscure holiday of the day today. It just consists of National Goof Off Day today. I, it's always on the 22nd of March. It just happens to be on a Friday this year. So it's National Goof Off Day. It's your day to do what I do every day and get paid to do it. 
and just goof off. You have my permission. Like, yeah, it means anything to you. Happy National Goof Off Day today. I celebrate it on a regular basis, like pretty much every day. Let's move on to today in history. It was our first crack at trying to restrict the slave trade. It was called the Slave Trade Act of 1794, signed into law by George Washington. Turns out it didn't really have a lot of teeth. They tried. Uh, the law prohibited the transporting of slaves from the United States to any foreign country. It also made it illegal for Americans to outfit a ship for the purposes of importing slaves. Right, okay, so far so good. There was two problems with it. The act did not affect foreign nations and their importation of slaves, so foreign nations could still ship slaves over from Africa. No law against that. And the penalties for Americans convicted of the crimes were, was essentially nothing. There was no jail time, there was no prison time. If you violated the Slave Trade Act of 1794 and you were American, you just paid a fine, and most of them just paid their fine and kept right on doing it. Well, they tried anyway. It was 230 years ago today. Uh, a friendly reminder that we weren't always the good guys in World War II. We did some bad things too. The Japanese internment obviously leaps to mind and some other things as well. And this is one of the things that just didn't make any sense. March 22nd, 1945, 79 years ago today. The war is all but over. Germany is all but defeated. They would be defeated within the month. But, and for reasons that I don't know, the British Air Force bombed the living bejesus out of Hildesheim, Germany. Big city, it was pretty much destroyed 75%. 74% of Hildesheim, Germany completely obliterated by the British in an air raid. Why they did it, nobody knows. It had no military significance. They weren't making arms for the Nazis. They didn't have any prisoner war camps or gas chambers or anything. It was just a town. They bombed it right out of existence for no reason whatsoever on the uh, 22nd day of March in 1945. Rock and roll music history. 61 years ago today, the first album by an unknown group from Liverpool called The Beatles is released in Great Britain. It's called Please Please Me. It took them 16 hours of total studio time to record the album. EMI didn't really know what they had, so their budget was just 400 pounds, which was the deal of the century. They certainly made their money's worth. Please Please Me hits the record stores, and everybody went, wow. These guys are pretty good. That was on the state in 1963. Uh, 48 years ago, there is the Big A, the Anaheim, uh, the Big A in Anaheim. That's how it looked uh, back in 1976. As we roll footage, I'll have to explain to you. First of all, the Who playing there on um, the day before, March 21st, 1976. Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, John Intwistle, and the great Keith Moon on a beautiful day at Anaheim Stadium. Great rock and roll. Look at the crowds having a good time. Frisbees, beach balls. May have been, may have been some illicit drug use at the Big A in Anaheim. This was uh, March 21st, 1976. March 22nd, 1976, 48 years ago today. After the concert, the groundskeepers for the California Angels are getting the Big A ready for opening day. Got themselves about a week, got to, with the, you know, with the, the, the park into shape, they got to put the grass back in after the concert. What did they find growing in the outfield? Hundreds and hundreds of marijuana plants. Leftover seeds from the Who fans from a couple of days before. I still find that funny. And I remember this. I remember this very well. March 22nd, 1978, 46 years ago today. The patriarch of the Flying Wallendas, Carl Walenda, doing a promotion in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Tight walk, tight rope walking between two towers in downtown Puerto Rico. Here is ABC News for March 22nd, 1978. Is it B-roll? Well, roll it. I believe there might be audio here, Uriah. I'm not sure. James Walker. 
The only place I feel alive, said Carl Walenda, is on the wire. And there he was this morning, 73 years old, 120 feet in the air, 10 stories above San Juan, performing as he had for 58 years. The idea was to promote a circus act he was performing with his granddaughter. So, a high wire walk across the street from one beachfront hotel to another. But as he reached halfway, the ocean wind suddenly picked up, gusting to 30 knots. And Carl Walenda, the best man in the world on a high wire, fought for his balance. Two hundred people saw Walenda fall. Many rushed to help, but it was too late. Walenda's body had struck a parked taxi. He was dead on arrival at the hospital. On this date in 1978. And birthdays. The oldest man ever to go to space. A lot of people think he's probably still in space. William Shatner. Born in Canada, he's got a green card, he's an American citizen, of course, Captain Kirk, T.J. Hooker, Boston Legal, and uh, a few years ago, at the age of 90, he became the oldest person ever to fly into space. William Shatner is 93, his hairpiece is seven years old. They're both celebrating birthdays today. Andrew Lloyd Webber is 76, one of only 18 people with EGOTs. Now, there's not a trophy, it's just he's, he has an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. An EGOT. Only 18 people have accomplished that feat. He's one of them. Andrew Lloyd Webber is 76. And Bob Costas is 72. And he has a unique claim to fame that nobody else can say. He is the only person in television history to win an Emmy Award in sports broadcasting, news broadcasting, and entertainment broadcasting. Nobody else has done that. Bob Costas has 29 Emmy Awards, which is 29 more than I have, but you have to put on quality television to get an Emmy Award, and well, we're still trying. We're just a little engine that could. Bob Costas is 72. When we come back, Mike McNaughty has an opinion, and Alan Walker will be joining me as well from the Chelan Douglas Community Action Council, but I would be remiss if I didn't thank our platinum sponsor, Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. Don't forget to get your HVAC system checked, your air conditioner, before the heat comes, you don't want to break it down in July. If you can avoid it, have Alpine Air go out and take a little look-see. It'll let you know if they need to tune it up a little bit or not. Pool to Spa Services on Worthen Street, not far from uh, the Pipus Public Market. It's not too late maybe to get yourself a spa and enjoy it in the rain over the weekend. And finally, our friends uh, at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. You're watching a five-star, you're watching a four-star edition anyway of Wake Up Anche Valley on this Friday. Mike McNaughty is next. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way, we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Save Full service at a low, low price. Yo escogí Pinnacles porque aquí en la escuela es muy tranquilo porque hay pocos estudiantes y muchas oportunidades para ellos. Es una escuela pequeña y tranquila. Me gusta venir a la escuela cada día porque hacen que la escuela sea divertida. Um, escogí la escuela Pinnacles porque es una gran escuela para la comunidad y también una gran experiencia para mi hijo. The madness has started at the National RV Show. Being hosted once again at the Grant County Fairgrounds, March 14th through the 18th. Top manufacturers are coming from across the country. Like Grand Design, Flagstaff, Thor, Forest River, and SMC Horse Trainers. Thanks on site with super low interest rates. Zero down and no payments till July. Enter to win 30000 in cash. Or a new 2023 StarCraft trailer. No purchase necessary. Shoot the basket and get an additional $500 off after you make your deal. The National RV Show has Grand Design, Flagstaff, and more at the Grant County Fairgrounds, March 14th through the 18th. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local 
because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Compass. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road. So you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog McDonald, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I post on Facebook quite a bit, it drives my poor wife crazy. And I'm often posting about issues that I have with what certain churches do and about my concerns about what is being presented concerning what some call Christianity these days. And then I'll get accused of picking on a specific church, even though I never mentioned a specific church by name. Well, this is what my response is and the question I want to ask. If I say something general and unspecifically critical about what some are calling Christianity these days, and you immediately connect that criticism to a specific religious group and jump to the conclusion that that's the group I'm talking about, doesn't that say more about that particular organization than does my criticism? <laughs> now think about that. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Abby says thank you to all the hometown heroes making our community so great. If you know a deserving hometown hero, shoot us an email, hero at abbeys.com. Every week, we'll thank some of these heroes with a free giant pizza. Abby's, proud to serve your community. Be a hero tonight. Treat your family and friends to Abby's famous hometown hero pizza. This giant features our classic pepperoni, tasty Italian sausage, and crisp green peppers for a one-of-a-kind legendary flavor. Visit abbeys.com for a special pizza at a very special price. The new Hummer EV is everything you want in an all-electric vehicle. It's powerful, reliable, comfortable, and will take you anywhere you want to go, on road or off. Why buy one of those lesser EVs when you can have one that uses them for traction? Order your Hummer pickup or SUV today from Sangster Motors, batteries included. The Wenatchee Valley. Here, most of us really enjoy the great outdoors, and most of us try to make the most of our natural resources. Here at Apple Valley Honda, we know that for generations, we have harnessed nature to sustainably power the West, and we are proud to be part of that tradition as an environmentally green dealership award winner. Being a green dealership means Apple Valley Honda has reduced our overall environmental impact. We are so proud to live in this wonderful community. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Culinary Apple is North Central Washington's premier kitchen store with everything you need to elevate your own culinary experience. A walk on Wooden Avenue wouldn't be complete without a stop at the Chelan Chamber of Commerce. There you'll find all the information you need about local businesses, events, and activities across the entire Chelan Valley. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. Your home runs on hot water. From the kitchen, to the bath, to the laundry. So Rheem offers a wide variety of water heaters from traditional models to ones smart enough to tell you how much hot water is available. On second thought, perhaps the laundry can wait. Uh, well, if you're like me, you're uh, just a huge fan of the uh, Fast and Furious 
franchise. It's a great bunch of action flicks, and I am very proud and very excited to welcome the star of the Fast and Furious franchise, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Walker is joining us here in the studio. Paul, I love that. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I'm, I'm sorry. People. Easy mistake. It's, easy mistake. It's actually it Alan Walker the yeah. from the Shalan Douglas. Yeah, it's not so fast and furious. Yes. Action yes. Council. I'm sorry. Oh, I it's, did, it's I got, okay. It happens. It I got happens. The, I got yeah. the wrong notes. It's, it's the whole. Yeah. yeah. How you doing, my friend? Doing very well. We uh, very visited well. you uh, back in early January to take a look at the new digs at the yeah. old C&O Nursery. Yeah. Things were happening pretty mm -hmm. fast. Give us a quick update between January 5th and March 22nd. And March 22nd, sure. So our uh, food pantry, uh, our community market, uh, is really close to being open. We're going to have that open here at the end of March, which is a big milestone uh, for us along in the process of the renovations there on the CNO building that we purchased uh, back in May of 2023. So that is coming along and so getting that pantry open really just kind of shifts all of our food uh, operations now out of there, out of the CNO building. That, uh, and so we are excited about that. We're excited to bring this uh, opportunity to our community. And now you have some elbow room which you didn't have before at, at the old place down by Denny's. Absolutely. Lots of elbow room. We were very cozy there before. Uh, we had some people on site a couple days ago and the uh, cooler and freezer units are about 1,200 square feet a piece. And uh, the gentleman was saying, well, your old facility was about the size of that. And I said, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, so we've gone from about 500 square feet of uh, cooler and freezer storage to 2,400 total. So big change. The pantry is the last uh, food distribution thing that still needs to be done done, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, and then we'll start on the commercial kitchen. So it's a tied to the food pantry, but the uh, commercial kitchen is, uh, is another project and we'll get started on that here at the end of the month and start build out of that particular phase of the project. When you say a commercial kitchen, the full mm -hmm. nine yard deal. Yes, it'll be a, a demonstration uh, education kitchen, uh, primarily focused. Uh, there will be four individual uh, workstations inside the kitchen where we can do cooking classes, uh, nutrition and health education, and really uh, illustrate uh, to individuals that are utilizing the community market, the foods that are available in the market, and then how do you prepare those foods once you get home. That makes perfect sense. You guys are still spread out all over the place. You still have the place on Lewis Street, which has been yes. your longtime home. You're in the process of transitioning out of that, but your yes. offices, your offices, Shalon Douglas Community mm -hmm. Action Council is still there. Yes. AmeriCorps has some offices there and some at the new location. At the new location, yes. Yeah. So we have AmeriCorps members uh, serving with our organization. Some are in the food uh, distribution services, so they're at the new location. Some are helping with our literacy and asset building uh, program, so they're still at the Lewis Street office and so we still have staff at uh, two locations but that's better than four so we're we've cut the number of locations in half and soon we'll cut it in half again and your Lewis Street headquarters which you just plain out grown yes is a nice little tie-in for what Alma and her good folks at cafe want to do they want they want to move into your old building and, and they should yes give us an update on that yes uh, Alma and her team are very excited about uh, moving into our current location that we've been in for the last uh, almost 60 years and so uh, spoke to Alma just recently as a week or two ago just touching base on that uh, there prepared when we're ready. Uh, they want to purchase the building from us and move their operation uh, to there. It's a great location for them. They're just uh, currently located two or three blocks from where we are, uh, still on Lewis Street there. So they're excited about that potential. Is your move out to the old CNO headquarters by Jet Pro Auto Wash and uh, Les Schwab on North Wenatchee Avenue, is that going to be an inconvenience for your regular clients who are so used to either visiting you at Lewis Street or going to the, to the other yeah. pantries? We don't anticipate that. Uh, it's a shift. Uh, certainly we've been in that location for so long. but. Uh, one of the really great things about the new location on North Wenatchee Avenue is uh, Link Transit uh, has a stop both north and south on Wenatchee Avenue right in front of our building. <clears throat> so from that perspective, it's a really convenient access for public transportation. In your, in your line of work, what was your whole take on this whole idea of rolling back a tax uh, <laughs> that was approved already by the voters five years ago and thinking about, well, we'll put it to the ballot again? Mm -hmm. That's that. Probably a tad frustrating for you. Uh, I mean, a lot of your clients depend on public transportation. Yeah, a lot of our clients depend on public transportation, and it was a significant benefit uh, to 
many, uh, not just our clients, uh, but even our staff. We have staff members that utilize public transportation to get to and from work. Our AmeriCorps members rely on it. Uh, so it, it was. Uh, I was uh, surprised, but we will move forward again, right? Alan is walking a very fine line and doing it well, I might add. Speaking of AmeriCorps, this is the, this was, uh, the impetus for me to get a hold of you again. Yes. Uh, Alan, uh, you're one of your AmeriCorps people came by our studios the other day to drop off this flyer. Talk about this drive that's going on right now. It ends tomorrow. Um, talk about uh, what, you're, what you are in need of. Yes, uh, this is a service uh, project that our AmeriCorps members have put together. They, uh, while they are serving, as a member, uh, we asked them to do a certain number of projects throughout their, their term, and this was one that they came up with. So it's all the AmeriCorps members serving uh, in Chelan, Douglas, and Okanagan County. And they come together, there's roughly 20 members serving in that area, and they are uh, collecting food items and non-food items. So essential items, think uh, deodorant, uh, food and hygiene product, products, uh, shampoo, uh, socks, those type of things. And then they're really uh, targeting their audience uh, for the items uh, to the homeless population. And so they've done outreach to the homeless population. And then on Saturday afternoon, uh, they'll set uh, all the uh, supplies that have been donated from our communities and people will be able to come through and fill uh, a bag with the items that they need. People associate you as we look at the footage of the of the food pantry and the and your, your new warehouse that you've in the process of moving into. Yeah. They just associate Sean Douglas Community Action Council with with helping out with with weatherization of older homes and various mm -hmm. other things and food, the food pantry. They don't necessarily mm -hmm. think yeah. the things that people need on a daily basis that you don't put in your mouth. Right. Like deodorant, like soap, like blankets and stuff like that. It is, it, and it's really difficult uh, for uh, a lot of folks to purchase those items. And they're items that we don't typically have uh, through our food distribution services. Uh, we receive food, we don't receive a lot of the other items. And so whenever there's an opportunity to really uh, acquire some of those essential items, we take that opportunity when we can. Uh, again, uh, the auto drop-off locations, and again, as Alan already mentioned, personal hygiene products like deodorant and soap, I, I could probably use some. I didn't shower today. <coughs> Uh, undergarments, blankets, pots and pans. It's one thing to have a kitchen and yes. get food from you guys mm -hmm. without anything to cook it in. That's always that kind of deal. It is. Uh, yeah. Can openers. Yeah. Can oh, openers yeah. is another item. In basic fact, kitchen utensils. Uh, basic assume. kitchen yeah. utensils, yes. And so uh, that was an item that came up uh, just recently for us was uh, the idea of can openers. And it's like, well, gosh, why don't we have a stockpile of can openers? Yes. It makes perfect sense. You got a stockpile of cans. We got a stockpile of cans and they all don't have the pop top that is so convenient. Yeah. So uh, many of them do not. So having a stockpile of can openers is makes perfectly logical. Again, I, I got sidetracked, but once again, oh. the uh, the food distribution center that we just talked about, the old uh, CNO Nursery on North Wenatchee Avenue, uh, their office building on Lewis Street, the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center is a drop-off location, both grocery outlets, Wenatchee and East Wenatchee. WorkSource uh, in the East Wenatchee office of WorkSource on uh, 9th Street, and uh, SkillSource, which is uh, just around the road on Mission Street, not yeah. far from where we're mm -hmm. sitting. Yeah. Bring the stuff by and they will take care of it. Real quickly, while I have you here, um, Congresswoman Schreier, yes. who was instrumental in getting and you guys uh, a bunch of money, I think three, three million, million. Three yes. million and uh, State Representative Mike Steele who got the state to fork up a million bucks from mm -hmm. the state level. That's that's a nice big kitty. Yes, You're going to have a, a, a little little get together. You want to talk about that real quick? Yes, we're having a, a soft opening of our new food pantry on March 28th in the afternoon from 2.30 to 3.30. Uh, Representative Schreier and uh, uh, Congress, Congresswoman Schreier and Representative Mike Steele will both be uh, participating in that as well as some other uh, elected officials, some of our donors, and then just uh, we certainly, if folks are interested in coming by, uh come on by, we'll be there from 2.30 to 3.30 at 1700 North Wenatchee Avenue. Do you need to borrow a giant set of those oversized novelty scissors to cut things? Fortunately, the Chamber of Commerce has a set, okay. and so we're partnering with the Chamber, uh, Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce, and Steve and Chelsea and their team will be there, and their ambassadors to help us uh, do the official ribbon cutting. Yeah, they have to call my brother. For one thing, he's not the mayor anymore. <laughs> uh, let's close out where we began. Uh, when is the, what's your timeline for having the entire operation of Chelan Douglas Community Action Council under the same roof at 17 North Wenatchee Avenue. Get you guys out of your old business, uh, old, old building on, on Lewis Street. I know you need to remodel the old c and offices. Uh, yes. They were pretty dated. So do you mm -hmm. have a general idea of when you're all going to be under the same roof? Uh, when it's done. 
Alan Walker, everybody. <laughs> Star of the Fast and Furious <laughs> franchise. Uh, check it out and um, say hi to all my friends down there in Hollywood. I will do that, but uh, we hope to be in uh, fall. Okay. Fall yeah, you you yes. can't be, you know. It, it's, a, it's a fluid moving target. It's a renovation. Anybody that's done a renovation yeah. uh, knows those uh, dates yeah. are flexible. Uh, keep in touch. Let me get anything that develops. Let me know. All right. I will do that. Say hi to your lovely much. wife for me. Absolutely. All right. She's down in Disneyland. Is she really? Yeah. No. Oh, shaking mm -hmm. hands with a giant yeah, mouse. With a giant goofy mouse. Mouse. Yeah. Hands the size of a Maytag. I yes. can never quite yeah. figure that right. out. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they don't really come to Disneyland anymore <laughs> for that very reason. But knowing my luck, we'll be bought out by Disney in the not too distant future. Yeah. Anyway, Alan Walker from the Shalane Douglas Community Action Council. You're watching Wake Up Anchi Valley. We'll be right back. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Attention, attention. It's Collins Fashion's big buy one, get one free sale. That's right. Buy one red check or tag item for half price and receive the next item free. Amazing selection of vests, jackets, sweaters, tops, boots, scarves, etc., etc. And we are receiving wonderful spring merchandise arriving daily. Capris, colorful tops, dresses, special occasion fashions for your upcoming events. We have foundation, shoes, and jewelry, personal service and stylists, and savings all at Collins in downtown Wenatchee. The Honda you want is here. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Civic, which car and driver calls fun to drive. There has never been a better time to drive in the moment with Honda. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. back out of here to get your weekend going on this Friday edition of Wake Up in Anchi Valley. Yesterday was the last really nice day of this gorgeous spring weather with record high temperatures either set or tied for an extended period of time. It was an anomaly we know that was going to eventually end and it will and if you're traveling into the mountain passes this weekend whether you're going east or west you will find some snowfall. They're expecting maybe five, six inches on Stevens, not quite as much on I-90. Most of the snow is going to come down overnight tonight into Saturday, a little bit on Sunday, but you will find some winter driving conditions on Stevens Pass, and if you're heading off to the, uh, to the east on Lookout Pass, not a lot of snow, just enough to make things a, a little on the dicey side. Down here in the Wenatchee Valley and around our viewing area, the big story tomorrow is going to be rain. Here's your forecast. One more look at it. As the day progresses, our chance of rain increases by the end of the day today by about sunset. We could see some light drizzle. Uh, the clouds will be thickening up too as they roll in and a high of 58. Rain overnight tonight and pretty much most of the day on Saturday. Overnight amounts quarter of an inch. Saturday amounts half an inch. That's a lot of rain. And a high of 51. Hope it doesn't ruin your weekend, but Sunday doesn't look too bad. And Monday, too, sunshine and highs in the mid-50s. Have a good and safe weekend. Take us along this weekend. We're portable. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.
Welcome back to Network TV for episode five of our 11th season. I'm David Maybe, your host and marketing director at NCW Tech Alliance, where our mission is to harness the transformative power of technology and enrich lives and foster community growth across North Central Washington. Our commitment extends to the nurturing innovation, facilitating meaningful connections, and championing educational initiatives that empower our diverse community. In this episode, we're delving into a compelling narrative that bridges the realms of technology and community service. We're joined by Russ Allman, the Director of Communications at the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center, whose illustrious career in the tech industry spans over 25 years. Russ's journey from providing technical support to a wide array of clients, including Fortune 500 companies, to his pivotal role in enhancing digital communications and infrastructure at the Senior Activity Center, showcases a profound impact on technology uh, in the community engagement 